Ultimately, Foster, Smith and Ryan went 18-15. Their forwards back split. They shrunk down on the Lucys and midfield to bolster their propping and outside back stocks, which took some of the conjecture off the table. There were some unlucky figures to have not heard their name, though as always, but the tale of Beaver is a well-known one, as any of them know will be staying really ready and ideally within cell phone range. You just might get the call. Justin Marshall was an all-black great in his own right and knows what World Cups are all about. He's the leading voice in New Zealand of rugby analysis, and we're lucky to have him this morning. Uh, good morning to you, Justin, and um, disappointed that um, you're not going to the World Cup for New Zealand viewers as such, although we might get you uh, through Supersport. That's great news. Good morning, Smithy, and good morning to uh, everybody tuning into your show. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Really good that I get the opportunity, unfortunately, not with Sky Sport, but uh, going over with a broadcast partner of Sky and Super Sport um, and yeah, involved with some legends of the game. And, uh, yeah, absolutely, obviously, the Springbok Games will be coming in uh, to New Zealand TV screens. So in some capacity, you will see me to a degree. Uh, not probably the way I would have liked to have been heard, but um, still to be over there, mate, at a Rugby World Cup is incredibly satisfying, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, Justin. So uh, we wish you all the best there. Um, of course, you would have uh, had a, a decent old eye over what was uh, unfolding yesterday here in Napier. Um, honestly, uh, one of the most predictable squads, if you look at the pattern of Ian Foster and co and the fact that they are a fit, pretty faithful bunch. Yeah, I think you've nailed it there, Smithy. Absolutely. He's been very consistent since taking over the All Blacks, uh, and persistent, I'd use that word as well. Um, you know, given the fact that there's been many uh, drums beating, in cue, uh, including me, on the drumsticks, to have somebody like Will Jordan uh, have an opportunity at fullback, and he only really relented when he had everything locked up for the year to give him an opportunity at the weekend. He's stuck by his guns by playing him on the right wing whenever he's been available and fit. Uh, and he's been a big believer in Bowden Barrett, um, having him on the field in some capacity. Uh, and then you look at the rest of the makeup of the side, uh, yeah, there's no real bolters there. You think of Tamaiti Williams, who's probably played his way into the side, uh, Lester Fying Anuku, who he had last year, but didn't really util utilise. Um, and, and the rest of them, yeah, they, they pretty much have been there or thereabouts uh, in his thinking in the last couple of years in particular. OK, um, I, I think there's a bracket of players. Uh, we should just get down on our knees and pray that uh, they do mm. not get injured in this because I'm worried about uh, the backup there. And one of them is in uh, your area of uh, great expertise is at halfback because Aaron Smith undoubted. They have gone for Christie and Roy Gard. Roy Gard has been around for 35 seconds and uh, Christie mm. has yet to show... He's a top-class international halfback. That worries me. Yeah, it's one of the positions where there isn't the depth that we would like uh, leading into a Rugby World Cup. And, and absolutely, like, would Aaron, uh, if Aaron Smith was to suffer an injury that kept him out of the World Cup, or kept him even out of games, Smithy. Like, let's not just mm. say he lost his entire World Cup. But we had to have somebody else step into his boots for two, three games, possibly like what's going to happen with Brodie Retallick at the start of the tournament, then you want to be assured that the person stepping into those shoes is capable, is experienced, won't be um, overawed by the occasion of a Rugby World Cup knockout situation. Uh, I think, you know, when you look at the, the, the balance of some of the other positions, it's why somebody like Bowden Barrett is just so super important. You know, like, would you trust Damien McKenzie or David Havili should Richie Moonga fall over to be the general should that happen, you know? And you would have to say no because there's just too much at stake. So, yeah, there is a lack of depth. Look, at the end of the day, the other player that was going to figure into that equation was Brad Weber. I always felt that he gave us a better balance. If we had Roy Gard, who offers the foil, who's a different style of player, who will challenge defenders, particularly when they're tired, bring him in, bringing him into the game changes the picture. And then you've got... a Two similar players, and, and Weber and equally Aaron Smith, I think that our game plan wouldn't suffer, whereas Christie's a slightly different blended player in amongst all three. So I, I, fear, I feel your trepidation, and, and you're right to feel that way. So they're going to need to make sure that they, during the pool stages, which is an easy pool for the All Blacks against 
Uruguay, Namibia, you know, teams like that, even Italy to a degree, these guys get some regular game time because you know what you're going to get out of Aaron Smith. Right, did you agree with the 18-15 uh, uh, split? Was it 18-15 split for the All Blacks? Yeah, uh, no, I didn't. Um, I thought I thought we were a loose forward short. Um, you know, the, the other area of concern if someone was to fall over for, the, for me massively is number eight. I'm, I'm a bit concerned should Adi Savia get injured that we've got a genuine world-class number eight to fill his boots. And... I just think by taking somebody else that it still allows Shannon Frizzell to play on the blind side, like an Ethan Blackadder, yes, I don't know when he was going to be able to get into the tournament, or even uh, Sam Petty Finau, who showed that he could cope as a blind side, then you can slip Frizzell, who's played enough number eight into the number eight jersey. Haven't seen enough of Luke Jacobson, to be honest, and I'm not convinced that he's the big, strong robust number eight that we need against the likes of Ireland and France and South Africa. So, no, I would have definitely taken another big loose forward. I know they can slip Scott Barrett in there, but hey, at the moment, Scott Barrett's going to have to play lock because Ritalik's not going to be fit. That's true. Um, And they obviously trust uh, that he's able to do that. So just three specialist Mm. locks using a backup of uh, Shannon Frizzell, which I, I think is... A very interesting choice, uh, indeed. Uh, the, sa- the same could be... Were you worried after you left uh, Dunedin last week uh, about the, the sketchy performance of Damien McKenzie? Yeah, I was, um, particularly in his game management. Um, Australia came out of those uh, sheds like a bullet of cake. And then they, they would have been wound up by Eddie. I was expecting that. I think I predicted on Sky that it would be a 1-12 to game. Um, and... You know, I know Australia, when they've been bitten, they, they come out and they grit their teeth. So it was always going to be, you know, a bit of fire and brimstone. And the All Blacks, um, when that happens and the opposition are playing well, then you need to try and slowly extricate them out of the game by playing good territory, good field position, kicking accurately, and then not allowing them into the game. Well, the opposite happened, didn't it? We, we kicked inaccurately. McKenzie was guilty of kicking the ball down the throat of a lot of their players. They counter-attacked. And he just didn't get his game management right. Now, look at the rest of it, the odd error, the odd tackle that he missed. You know, sometimes a player has moments like that. But when you're a general, you know, you need to get your your ducks in a row and making sure that you're getting your team able to be in the right areas of the field to, to function and get your game plan going. And that very much didn't happen. And yes, an answer to your question in a long-winded way, which is not unlike me, mate. I wasn't <laughs> worried. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Justin, uh, David Harvey did enough for you. I mean, he's that, he's, is he a, tight, a World Cup bracket type player for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a very much a fan of David Harvey. What he brings, he brings a, a also an extra player, player into the mix in terms of kicking strategy uh, because he's got such a great kick and he's a very accurate kicker. He knows, um, you know, when to step up and, and take that responsibility off your your two main kickers. Um, so when he gets the opportunity to do that, that helps. Uh, when you look at, if anybody's got any doubts, go back to um, Alice Park last year in the Test match over there. I thought he was simply outstanding. Um, you know, against a very good defensive side and big side, um, he was probably one of the players, if not the player of the match. Uh, he's back in form. His super rugby form was outstanding. Scott Robertson had him on the field fit every time that he could, and it didn't matter what jersey it was in. So yeah, he's a good selection, and he offers the ability to play right across the back line. And I mean wing as well. He can play... The only position he can't play is that incredibly difficult and talented position of number nine, Smithy. The rest of them he can take care of. <laughs> yes, the halfbacks. They always get those uh, <laughs> analyst roles, don't they? The old halfbacks, you and Greg. And... Now, listen here. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've got to say, um, obviously, Jason Ryan had a lot of influence in the, the front rows, the props, etc., I was a little bit underwhelmed by, um, I've got to say, uh, Williams and Lolala uh, in the weekend when I consider the difference the second half scrum made to the match and the outcome of the match. Yeah, very good point. I think there was cause and effect, though, to a degree. Um, I think uh, Australia losing Bell in particular really did depower their scrum. You know, the guy's six foot three, hundred and twenty eight kgs, um, Bell, and he was playing really good rugby, I think. 
once he left the field, they really lost their anchor, Australia. But equally, yeah, the impact of the front row in the second half made a difference. Um, I was a bit surprised that Joe Moody didn't get the opportunity to be included in this side. Um, maybe it's they just are not convinced he was fit enough. Um, but, look, I, I guess the big question we've got to ask each other when you see the way that the Irish, um, French and, and in particular South African props play, have our props developed enough with the ones that we've picked to be able to be good in the scrum, good at their core role, but equally be good enough ball players that they offer us a real balance in our game attack. So, yeah, that's going to be a point of difference. But, you know, obviously our scrum did sure up in the second half. You're absolutely right. With your upcoming role, of course, um, your, your major focus may well be on the Springboks uh, and their yep. performance. Uh, their rugby championship, what did you make of that? Uh, average. Um, I, I don't think they quite got the mojo in terms of getting their selections right. They messed around with their side a bit. Uh, you know, they were nursing some people back from injuries. I think they 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 very much like Ireland. They need Andre Pollard fit and and out there playing. Um, you know, if Sexton's missing from Ireland, they're just a different side. With the greatest respect to who plays underneath both of those players, they really need Andre Pollard driving them South Africa. They need to get their balance between their bomb squad and making sure that they don't go too heavy on reserves and, and have lost the game before that bomb squad comes in. But some players need to make sure that they're starting. They've definitely got the firepower. They, they, they've got enough firepower there across the board and skill set. Their wingers are electric. Um, you know, when you look at Colby and, uh, uh, you know, the, the outside back three that they can put together with Billy LaRue coming in as the first receiver... Um, yeah, look, they'll be a force to be reckoned with. They know what to do at World Cups. I uh, see England have uh, announced overnight Steve Borthwick a 19-14 split and uh, his particular squad, so he's gone slightly different to our makeup. Um, they are yep. heavily engaged at the moment. They lost to Wales, uh, which was a bit of a surprise. Can we read anything into the summer championship, they're calling it? Oh, I think so, because you, you need... Look, I know a big catchphrase word at the moment is momentum, but momentum is confidence, Smithy. And, and you know, just if you don't want to use the moment, uh, word momentum, use it in a degree of, of, of saying, righto, confident teams are hard teams to beat. You know, you know your strategy, you know your teammates, you know how to go out there and beat the opposition, even on days when you're not having the greatest of days and they're having a better one, you still have the confidence to be able to get the job done. And I certainly feel that going into an opener, the real, there's some massive games. Like, if you want to mm. do your research, you look at that first round, like Wales, Fiji, for example, South Africa, Scotland, obviously New Zealand, France, I believe England, Argentina. Um, you know, that, that, that is make or break stuff. Hit, hit that first round. So that's why I was very vocal last week. I did not feel that Ian Foster made the right decision in the team he picked. We were playing bloody good rugby. The players were getting confident. They were starting to know each other. And bang, he goes and makes 13 changes. The next hit out we've got is Twickenham. And then we hit France and Paris. I just felt if he needed to find out about a few of those players, bring them off the bloody bench. Like, and, and even if you want to bring them on before half time, But let that starting 15 continue the momentum, confidence that they've got. Because this World Cup is going to hit you pretty hard in the face right up from the first round. Yeah, I'm not sure you want to give France, Ireland, South Africa a 15 to 20 point start because when you play a new no. combination like he did, it takes time to settle. I mean, we'd work that out. I, I mm. totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't feel that it was the right call to um, not only uh, you know upset the rhythm that the All Blacks have already got, but, but give any other nation any sniff of opportunity and show some vulnerability. And, and I think we showed vulnerability at the weekend in terms of our depth. You know, we've already spoken about the halves. Um, you know, the back three took quite a while to fire. You know, better teams in the world would um, better teams in the world would be able to break us down and, and knock us over, you know. So yeah, it's a bit of a mm. bit of a hairy one at the weekend. Okay, uh, well uh, Justin, we appreciate you coming on mate. Uh, all I can say is congrats on uh, the fact that you are going to the World Cup, you fully deserve to be, and um, we'll look to hear any little snippets coming from you during those South African games. Uh, travel well and enjoy France. I think you might. 
I absolutely will, Smithy. You know me very well, um, and I really appreciate all of your support too, mate. I know that uh, you have my back, and that doesn't go unnoticed. Thanks for having me on the show, as always. Yeah, cheers, uh, cheers Justin. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, Justin Marshall with us there, and uh, yep, uh, we will have the benefit of his um, his thoughts, uh, his voice, etc., his momentum and commentary, which is what I, I miss. Uh, I love the way he just gives it a pure feeling. Um, you know, that's it. it for me, uh, that's what commentary is uh, all about. It's taking, taking you at home to the ground and feeling it. SENZ. It's Kiwi for Sport.